because I hear it roar. I don't want to fear the storm. I don't want to fear the storm.
Hey community, it's PC here and I just want to share with you what's going on in the life of your church. Now, hey, listen, we just want to let you know about October 13th. Why October 13th? Because that's when we're going to start Alpha. It's going to be a free eight-week course. It's going to be fantastic. We're offering it online and on-site at the same time. For more information, go to communitychurch.ca slash groups. There's a video there, and I just invite you to be a part of it. Or if you know somebody that's searching, be a part of it. It's going to be fantastic. Also, just want to remind you that we're still looking for some volunteers. That's right. We still have areas where we could use some help in kids ministry, youth ministry, tech, worship, uh, hospitality, all that kind of stuff. So if you're able to help us, we would totally appreciate that as we continue to do our work in ministry, both online and on site. 
Now, I also just want to remind you that our new service times has taken effect, 9 o'clock and 10.15, and you can register through the website each and every week. Now, just for anybody who's going to be joining us online, it means that our online starting October 3rd will shift from 11 o'clock to 11.30 and will only feature basically our announcements, tail end of worship, and the message, whoever's speaking. It's going to be fantastic. Make sure you join us. Also, lastly, just a quick reminder about giving. We're so grateful for your giving each and every week, and I speak blessing and favor on you as you walk out that giving in the way of obedience. We're so grateful for everything that you do, but just a reminder this morning, you can give in several ways. You can give online through the website, you can give online through your banking, or you can just make arrangements to drop it off here at the church anytime that you want. Just make sure you connect with Jen office at communitychurch.ca. Well, I think that's it for us today, and I just speak blessing on you, and let's just continue to press into God. Hey, community, I just want to say thank you for joining us today, and uh, as you can see, I'm here with a guest, and a special guest, actually, and also a special announcement that we want to share with you. With me today is Kathleen Krinsky. And uh, some of you probably recognize the face and uh, her and Nathan just got married, uh, two kids that grew up at community and uh, they just got married a couple of weeks ago. So congrats, you know, to, to you, Kathleen and to uh, Nathan. And, uh, but again, if you recognize her, you're probably going, Hey, that's Kathleen Ferns. And uh, so Kathleen's been a part of our church for a number of years. Her mom and dad have served so faithfully uh, throughout the years here at community and still continue to serve. Well, a few months ago, actually, Kathleen just shared with me what God's been doing inside of her heart uh, in a way of an opportunity at the university campus uh, in Kingston. Uh, She's been a part of Power to Change as a volunteer for a number of years, but now has an opportunity to serve full time with them for the next year, uh, doing some incredible work. And so she contacted me to ask, hey, can you pray? And uh, I said, well, can we help you out financially? And so she shared where she was at in the way of support. And so we met as a leadership team and said, you know what, we need to get behind this, not just in prayer, but we also want to be practical in supporting one of our own in doing the work of the kingdom. And so Kathleen, welcome to the team uh, of missions that we're supporting this coming year. Why don't you tell everybody about Power to Change? Yeah, sure. Thanks so much, Craig, for uh, having me. Uh, So Power to Change is a Canadian organization, and they're really just all about sharing the gospel. They operate based on uh, what's called the Great Commission in Matthew 28, where Jesus says, go therefore, make disciples of all nations. And uh, yeah, that's really their goal is just to help people across Canada uh, experience the power of Jesus to change the world. Um, Some of you might know Power to Change. It used to be called Campus Crusade for Christ back in the day. So some of you might know what that is. And uh, it's actually part of the broader international organization of uh, Crew International or Campus Crusade International. So yeah, what I'm kind of doing with Power to Change is specifically with the student ministry. So working with college and university campuses and uh, really just aiming to help every single student just take their next step toward Jesus, whether that's just getting curious about him or becoming a follower of him. So yeah, that's kind of what Power to Change is all about. They really believe that students are super strategic to reach with the gospel. They're the leaders of the future, and it's just a key point in their lives where they're making decisions about what they believe. And so, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be kind of working with this organization this year. Yeah, that's awesome. And you know, when you contacted me, Kathleen, it was no surprise because I've been following you on social media and kind of keeping track of how God's using you and your, you know, your future. And I've noticed over the last couple of years, just this intentional desire and passion to share the gospel with people through social media. So that's part of your role, right? Yeah, so my role is actually a couple different things. Uh, One of the things I'm doing kind of part time is working with the social media team for the student kind of division of power to change. So we have an Instagram and a Facebook page and I'm kind of helping to create content for that. I think it's so cool to be able to reach students with the gospel in a digital context, um, especially nowadays with the pandemic and everything being online, but also even before as just technology was evolving. I think um, digital ministry is really something that is part of the future. So that's part of what I'm doing. Um, And then the other thing I'm doing is a little different. I'm going to be working with a couple different university campuses, really just providing some discipleship, mentorship, one-on-one support to students. 
Um, I'm going to be working with Queen's campus, hopefully in person, and then as well remotely with Western, uh, which is kind of funny because the two schools actually have a rivalry. So it'll be kind of interesting to work with both. Um, yeah, but I just have really seen uh, in my years as a student with Power to Change that it's so important to, for students to have that mentorship as they grow in their faith and their walk with Jesus. I really want to equip students and empower them to be able to share their faith with others and help their friends to walk closer to Jesus but as they're pouring out and as they're serving their community they also need people to pour into them and so that's kind of what I aim to do and fill that gap and really help students to grow in their faith. That's awesome well it's no secret I have a huge passion for the next generation and uh, you know being a part of it as a youth pastor for many years and still championing that cause so I'm excited for you and so it was an easy decision for us as a leadership team to come alongside you this next year as Nathan is finishing up at school uh, in Kingston and you guys are there and you're just continuing to serve and I know that this is bigger Uh, I know that God's calling on your life in the way of ministry and so I guess my next question is before we end this is uh, what can we be praying for specifically Uh, as we launch into the school year here. Yeah, so there's a few different things that uh, you can all be praying. Uh, One thing would just be as schools are kind of still in the process of deciding how much is going to be able to be in person versus online, that's really hard for some of the student leaders of these campus ministries to make decisions about how to actually run the ministry this year. Um, And so I would just love prayer that um, we'd be able to have some reopening, some in-person activity in in a way that's safe for everyone. And uh, yeah, that students would just have wisdom about how to do that. Um, Another prayer request would really just be that students would really be inspired to share the gospel with others. Um, There's so many Christian students who gather in a community week in and week out, and they love having that Christian community on campus. But it's so important that they would just really see the need for the gospel on campus and have a real desire to uh, yeah to share the gospel with other students and uh, and yeah and for those students who aren't yet followers of Jesus just prayer for open hearts for them open minds open hearts uh, as they come into the school year university is a place where people are making all kinds of decisions about what they believe and so yeah I would just love to see more students with an open mind toward uh, Jesus. Um, And then just for me personally, I would just love prayer for wisdom as I'll be kind of working with one on one with a lot of different students. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, just wisdom to see what it is that they need, um, how I can help them to grow and how I can encourage them uh, throughout the year. And as well, just, uh, yeah, for balancing my time between the two kind of very different roles that I'll be taking on this year. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, we're definitely behind you in prayer. And of course, we're, we're going to be supporting you as well. And so let's do that. Let's just take a few seconds right here, right now, just to pray over Kathleen. And so, Father, we, we pray for Kathleen. We pray for the ministry of Power to Change and even the international side of things with Campus Crusade International. And, and God, what you're doing through this ministry around the world, and specifically, we're praying for Kathleen and her role as she's serving students, as she's loving them and encouraging them. God, helping to encourage them to share their faith. Uh, you know, God, helping students. Students that are coming to the campuses, uh, whether it's online or in person, and are searching and they need direction, God, and they need you. We know that. That's what, part of the reason why I'm sure Kathleen's a part of that is God knowing that the hope that she has, she wants to share with others. And so, Lord, would you empower her, give her the wisdom that she's looking for, give her the favor that she needs with uh, campus leaders, um, you know, school officials, different things like that. And God, may we see many lives uh, changed and transformed for the glory of God. And so God, we speak blessing and favor on Kathleen today and the ministry of power to change in Jesus name. Amen. 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 That's awesome. Well, listen, Kathleen, thank you for joining us. And I just want to encourage our church family and anybody watching this, that as you give regularly, would you consider giving above and beyond your tithes and offerings to go towards incredible ministries like Kathleen's? We have many others that we're supporting that are doing the kingdom work. They said, hey, listen, here am I, Lord, send me. And so we can do our part by praying, first and foremost, greatest thing we can do, and supporting them financially. So anything you give is awesome to help us meet that budget so we can support uh, Kathleen and the great work. So again, Kathleen, thanks for joining us. And uh, man, listen, you need anything let us know yeah thanks so much for having me it's always great to come back and be able to share with my uh, community church family where i grew up that's awesome awesome well have a great week and uh yeah say hi to nathan for us yeah i will bye-bye bye (laughs) 
Well, good morning, Community Church. It's so good to be with you guys here online. It's been a little bit while. Uh, it's been a little while, but it's been so good uh, being able to have this technology to be able to still gather online, and still uh, worship together, and, and and dig into God's word. And uh, man, it's hard to believe that it's already September. Uh, so, uh, however, the whole summer went by so fast, but man, it's been such a good September with our fall kickoff uh, here at the church and the uh, and the barbecue slash picnic that we had. That was absolutely incredible. Being able to uh, being able to uh, be here and see people and socially distance and have some food and talk with people from uh, from six feet and reconnect again. It was honestly such an incredible Sunday uh, as well. Youth is back into the swing of things, except it's looking a little different now. We have uh, we have, we gather on on Thursdays nights. It's grade six to grade 12, and it has been incredible. The first week we had archery tag and pizza all outside. It was an absolute blast. We had so much fun. And then just this past week, just on Thursday, we had our, uh, our first small group night uh, uh, of the school year, and that was incredible being able to dive into God's word again uh, with the students and learn more about Jesus and who he is and the fact that he is, uh, uh, he is a person. And so... Um, yeah, so we, however, and that was incredible, and so I'm excited today to be able to dive uh, into God's Word with you guys today. But before we do that, you guys all know it. You guys know it's coming because, well, it's just, it's my world now. And the fact that I'm a dad has been absolutely incredible. I love my son. Lots, I think that's part of the reason why uh, the summer has gone by so fast is because I was excited. Then he comes. He came a week early. Uh, over these past like five, six weeks actually, six weeks as of today that, uh, that he was born. And uh, it's been incredible. It's been challenging. You, uh, for all the, all the parents out there who said, like, just be ready for, like, the lack of sleep. Uh, I, I, didn't, I, I knew you were right, but I didn't want you to be right, uh, and it turns out you are right. Uh, the lack of sleep is definitely a, a, a struggle, um, and I, I can't even say that it's fully on me. It's more Rebecca. Uh, I'm still getting up. Don't worry. I'm doing my part, or I'm helping with everything that I can, with changing the diapers, and which I know people are really happy to hear that, yes, I've been changing diapers, even though I made a big stink about it. It has honestly uh, just been an incredible six weeks, and I'm excited to see and watch my son grow and, and grow into uh, the young man that God has created him to be. But with that said, uh, the past five weeks, I've kind of had some of my own insecurities that I've had re, re come up. I, they've kind of just kind of come into my head a little bit and it just makes me a little bit nervous because I, I don't want my son to go through some of those like harder things that uh, I went through in life and I don't want him to experience that and however I want him to be able to, to, to live uh, the best life. Whatever. So the thing is, is the thing that I that that I was thinking about when I'm these insecu- these insecurities of mine ca- came back up, or whatever, is that my, my 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 viewpoint is completely different. They're insecurities. They're 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 they're, they're in the past, whatever, and that, that that that's able to happen because of the filter that I look through, the lens that I look through, uh, or whatever. And so for exa- like for example, some of the things. Um, that some of those insecurities are my are are, are my learning are my learning disability, uh, or whatever, and I let those things like define me, and I don't want those things to define Malachi. I want him to grow up knowing that he can do anything through Christ, uh, who gives him strength. And so today, my question for you is 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 who are you? Man, it's so easy to jump in uh, and, and, and just answer that question that whatever that I'm, I, I'm, I'm Jonathan McLeod. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a lover of music. I, I love playing, playing drums. I love playing guitar. Uh, I love playing soccer and refereeing soccer. I love my, I love my family, which these are all very good and, uh, and important things. But, but who, who am I? 
for us to answer this question, we need to go back to Genesis. And so in Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse, uh, verse 27, it says, So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God created you in his image. This is significant for us to, uh, to, to, to understand that we are created in the image of God and we are created to be, uh, however, to, to, to live in that purpose that, that we are the image of God and our, our goal is to be pure and holy. And even when you read in Genesis, you see the creation story, you see the creation of, of men and, uh, and, and, and women and they were created holy and pure and then sin entered the world which then stops us from living to that full potential. But the good news is, is that later on in the story, and we're going to be diving more into is Jesus comes into the picture and actually makes that, that, that possible. And so our, our, our main text that we're going to be diving in today is, uh, is Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verses, verses 3 to 8. And we're going to just read this together, uh, and then we're going to just pray and just going to have a little bit of a conversation here. So let's read this together. It'll be up on your screen. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 8. And this is what it says. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what uh, he wanted to do, and, he, uh, and, and, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belongs to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he uh, purchased our freedom with, uh, with the blood uh, of, of his son and forgave us and forgave our sins. He has showered us with kindness uh, on us along with wisdom and understanding. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word. God, we thank you for, for who you are. And God, as we uh, just kind of dive into this a little bit more and, and wrestle through this, God, I just pray that, um, that your word just comes to life. God, that uh, we'll walk out of here changed and challenged. And so, Father, we just, we just give you these moments. God, speak to us and reveal yourself to us in new ways. God, even, even as I'm preaching, God, I pray that you just reveal something new that, that clicks and resonates, not just with me, but with everybody that listens. So, Father, we just thank you, and we give you this day in Jesus' name. Amen. So we just read, um, we just read from Ephesians chapter 1. And this is a thing that we need to understand uh, about this passage, is that, that we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. We have been given, uh, or, or we have been chosen, we've been adopted, we've been redeemed, forgiven, gr uh, grace, lavished, uh, and unconditional love accepted. We are pure and blameless and forgiven. We have received the hope of spending eternity with God, when, uh, when we are in Christ, these aspects uh, of, of our identity can never be altered by what we do. See, I'm just jumping right into this uh, today and Reverend, throughout this, uh, this passage of Ephesians chapter one, we see all of those things that I just listed that, 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 that we are chosen that we are adopted, that we are redeemed, that we are forgiven, that we are filled with grace, rather that we are, 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 are lavish with grace and we have unconditional love that God has given us. 
This is something that, that, that we need to let, 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 let sink into our heart a little bit because it's not too often we hear this list and necessarily feel every single one of those things. There's times where we don't feel chosen. There's times uh, uh, where, where we don't feel redeemed by God. We don't feel forgiven. We, however, we, 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 we don't feel like, like grace is something that, can, that, that is for us, that is for us as an individual that we are accepted, that you are loved. These are things that, 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 that are challenging to hear. But it's so important for us to understand when it comes to our identity and, 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 and who we are. When we choose God, when we choose that relationship with him, these are the things that come along with it. And the thing is today, church, is you can't look for those on your own. You can't find those on your own. You can't, you can't go to friends. You can't go to money. You can't go to your career. If you are looking for those things in any of those areas, they're going to come up empty. They're going to come up with no, with no value in them. The only place we can, we, we, we can find that is through Christ. And uh, everyone, today I just want to say a little bit of a quote from, from C.S. Lewis. Is, and it says, your, your real and, and new self, which is Christ uh, um, and also yours, and yours just because it is his, will not come as long as you are looking for it. It will come when you are looking for him. Today, church, I'm not sure, I'm not sure where you guys are at, but it's so important for us to, to understand that it's not about looking for it, but looking for him. Not finding our identity. You can't go looking for your identity because your identity is already found in Christ, the one who created you who thought of you from the beginning of time, who shaped you in, 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 in your mother's womb and, and, and created you with a purpose. It can only come when you're looking for him. There's a few things here that I just wanna, I wanna point out and I want you to understand that, that it's so important for us to seek after him, to find our identity in him. And like I kind of said at the beginning, this is something that is kind of just stirring in my heart that, that, that we as the church need to understand and we need to continue to get right. Because not often do we actually do this right. A lot of times we look for it ourselves. We look for it in our jobs. We look for it in, in different places. But the place we need to look for our, our, our identity the most is in Christ. So what do we need to do? The first thing I want, uh, I want to let us know that we, that, that we need to do is, is seek God, but don't settle for less than God's best. Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, verse, 30, uh, verse 33, says it the best. And it says, but seek the kingdom, uh, sorry, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all those things will be added to you. See, I live, we, like we, in, in, in Ephesians, we see this list of, of the fact that you are chosen, that you are adopted, that you are redeemed, that you are, 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 are covered and lavished in grace, that you are unconditionally loved. See, we see these things, but the place that you can, we, 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 we tend to try to find these things on our, on our own, but the place we need to be looking is, is in Christ. We need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and the rest of those things will fall into place. So for example, think about, think about moments in your life where you uh, knew you were, seeking, you were not seeking God, and your identity was more than likely wrapped up in that thing that you were seeking. 
some examples and some moments I, I think of in my own life would be friends when I was younger. I was really caught up. I wanted to, I wanted to fit in with the cool crowd. And so I was really worried about what my friends were, were, were thinking. And um, I, I, I let that become my identity. I sought for my identity in friends. And can I tell you that that's not a good place to look for it? Another moment, which is that you're going to think this is crazy, but it's true, and uh, whoever was, was, was when I was in college. I went to Bible college, and Bible college of all places. Sometimes I got so worked up within the, within the education side of things and trying to uh, become the best pastor, I wasn't actually seeking after God first. I, he wasn't my priority. There was a season when I was in Bible college where, where that was the truth. There's a moment when I was like, what was passionate, like really passionate about soccer. I still am. I love refereeing. But there was a season where that became the thing that I was seeking after, and that that was became my identity. But the reality is, is we need to seek first the kingdom of God. We need to seek the kingdom of God first. And understand that when we do that, we, 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 we don't want to settle for just the Sunday morning seeking God. We don't want to settle for just the Wednesday night small group. But every single day we need to seek, we need to seek the kingdom of God. The second thing I wanna I wanna talk about today is about how we honor God with your lifestyle that this kind of becomes a part of your identity of who you are is when you honor God with the way you live Colossians 3 verse 17 says uh, and whatever you do in words or deeds do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus give thanks to God the Father through him the way you love should be honoring to God. The way you treat other people should be honoring to God. It's not about building your own kingdom, but building the kingdom of God. The, our lifestyle, it's so easy in today's society to, to focus on, on building your own kingdom, to, to furthering your career. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying these are, are, are bad things, but when this becomes your identity on, on who you are, that's dangerous. We need to not build our kingdom, but build the kingdom of God, which means putting yourself back and putting God first and seeking Him. The third thing I want to say to you today is that it's important uh, to, to live free from the past, which means the guilt and the shame of the past, the things that are not godly, which can I say are challenging. Like I said at the beginning, I kind of let some things come back up in my life the past number of weeks. And I've had to re, re kind of understand that, you know what, those, that's in the past. Those, those don't define me because now I am in Christ. And I think uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says it the best. And it says, this means that anybody who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and the new life has begun. How often do we, do we struggle and, and sit in the past and we let that past hurt or guilt or pain that, that, that we've gone through dictate what we do now in the, uh, in, in, in the current moment? We can't let it, we can't let it control us because in those moments, that means we're not honoring God or seeking him. And if we truly want our full identity to be found in Christ, these are three simple, practical ways for us to, to chase after him, 
to, to continue to grow and allow God to sh- continue to shape us into his image. Don't get me wrong, this isn't just gonna happen overnight. We're all still working on it. From those that you look from a distance, it's like, man, they got it all together. They don't, they're still growing in these areas. These are things that we need to, to con- continuously work on. It's something that you have to choose. Every single morning, it's something that you have to choose. Every single day, every single moment, every single challenging moment, you need to choose this. And here's the thing, when we, uh, when we actually look when we look back at the passage uh, in, in Ephesians, some versions say pre- uh, predestined instead of, instead of chosen. This can be something that's hard to, to, to think about because we think, oh, that just makes it sound like ro- robots if God predestined us. But the reality is, 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 is that's not necessarily the case, that that's not what Paul is actually saying here because God has actually given us the, the, the free will to, to choose. And it's a, this passage is about those who choose him. And in fact, Paul, when Paul was speaking here to, uh, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to the church, he was, uh, it was actually more about corporate election in this passage. Because there's the understanding the culture of, 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 of what was going on here in, 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 Ephesus, uh, in Ephesus. And so, um, and so, for example, I think this is, the, this is one way I heard it and I feel like it's, it's just a good way of, uh, of, ex- uh, of, of explaining it. But for example, if I were to uh, right now put up on the screen a clip of Princess Bride. I don't know why I said Princess Bride, but that's just what I'm. That's just what I'm saying. If I put that up on the screen, and you watch that, you could say that you were predestined to watch that clip. But the reality is, is you had to choose to turn on this message in the first place. It's it's a choice. And you have to, and, and 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 you have to choose. This means, uh, this means every morning when you wake up, you need to choose to follow Christ. You need, to, uh, you, uh, 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 you are allowing these these truths to be your identity. When you when you choose to follow Christ, you are allowing these things to be your identity. That means you have, that you have been chosen. That. Uh, You've been adopted, redeemed, forgiven, grace lavished, uh, and unconditional love and accepted. You are pure, blameless, and forgiven, and you have received the hope of spending eternity with God. This is something that you you choose. My prayer for for us today, my prayer for me today specifically, is that I will continue uh, to, to, to let these be the truth throughout my life and grow in this area, for it to be my wives, for, for it to be Malachi's and, uh, and, and, and future kids, if that's in God's will. And my prayer for you today is the exact same. That that you will let this truth, that you'll let this be your identity, that you will choose him. Because it is for those who are in him. That's what Paul is saying here in Ephesians. He's saying, for those who choose him. So today, are you gonna choose him? Are you gonna let him become your identity on who you are and let that be the confidence that you stand on? Because when I look through this list, when I look through these things that, 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 that Paul listed, the fact that you're chosen, you're adopted, you're redeemed, you are forgiven, grace lavish, unconditionally loved, accepted, pure, blameless, forgiveness, and you have received hope of eternal life. I don't know about you, but all of those things sound incredible to me. And my prayer is that 
we can all grow and seek these things more and let that become who we are and let that be the way we live out our life. So today, I I ask you, I, I, I challenge you to examine your heart, to see where you're at. Maybe this is the first time you've heard this and you're like, no, you know what? I need my identity to be more wrapped up in, in, in my relationship with God. And I encourage you to do that. For those of you that are you know what? I've been, I've, I've allowed my identity to be wrapped in God, up, up in God, but I know there's more. So I, I just encourage you to seek after him more and more and more and that you will find your identity in him and don't let you and, and don't find your identity in other things because those are lifeless they'll lead to dead ends where when you find your identity in Christ the kingdom of God is your is your limit which there is no limit in the kingdom of God because you'll have eternal life with him let's pray together Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. God, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for the gift of life. And, and God, as we live life, God, there's, there's different things that are trying to seek our attention to, uh, uh, for us to wrap our identity up in. in, 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 in today, God, I pray for everybody from, from the youngest child in this, uh, that's listening to the, to the oldest that, that our identity will continually be wrapped up in you. God, that we, cho- that we will choose you today. And so, Father, I just pray that, that, that you give us the strength to do that. And so, Father, I just thank you for every single person listening today. God, I pray you just, that you just continue to bless us. God, that you continue to shape us. And God, I know you have big things for, for, for this church and for this community and for this world. And so, God, we just pray you just continue to work in our hearts. So God, we just thank you for today. And God, we pray you uh, be with us as we have a great rest of our day here on Sunday and a great week to come. So God, we just thank you for being with us and meeting us where we are at today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Community Church, I thank you guys so much for, uh, for, for listening. I'm hoping that you are blessed and encouraged by today's message. And just like Pastor Craig says uh, at the end of every single video, my name is is not Craig Luff. It is Jonathan McLeod. I'm the youth pastor here at Community Church, and this is your place to belong.